Hello and welcome back to another KMG video series. My name is Zach Kerstetter with KMG Academy in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, and in this series, every week we take a look at a different feature or tip or just something cool having to do with music production and Ableton Live. And so today I wanna to take a look at something that I think is really cool that not a lot of people really know about, which is setting up cue outputs in live. So you may be asking yourself, what is a cue output? Uh, essentially what cueing does is allows you to send one signal to your headphones and a different signal to the speakers. When would, might this be useful? Um, there's a handful of situations usually having to do with live performance. So say you are DJing on stage and you want the audience to be listening to one song and you want to be able to hear what the next song is going to be before the audience does. You can cue it up so you can listen to it, make sure it sounds good, make sure you can mix it, etc. before you turn up the volume and the audience listens to it. This also could be really important if say you want to get on stage and play with somebody like a drummer and you're playing your MIDI controllers or effects or doing whatever it is you wanna be doing, and the drummer wants to be playing in time with whatever you're doing. So you could have, you hand the drummer a pair of headphones and then send them a metronome signal coming from live so they can play in time with the metronome so everything sounds really good when the audience doesn't have to listen to that metronome. So uh, there's a handful of other situations where it could be useful other than that, but those are really big important things that especially in live performance, you wanna be able to have control over. So to start off, uh, you're gonna need an audio interface to do this. And not just any audio interface, you need an audio interface that has multiple outputs. So I'm gonna be using the Universal Audio Apollo Twin audio interface, which has plenty of outputs. Um, but if you have an audio interface, but it only has uh, a stereo output, this will not work. So for example, if you're using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is two inputs, two outputs, this is not gonna work. But if you're using the 2i4, it has four outputs and it'll work totally fine. Most interfaces these days have multiple outputs, but if you have a really small one, this might just not work at all for you, unfortunately. So what we're gonna do is first, we're going to check out our preferences inside of Live. And we're gonna go to our audio output device and make sure you have your interface set up. Um, so normally I would select my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, and we're gonna hit this output configuration button right here. And it's gonna show me um, all our different options for outputs, including mono channels, as well as stereo outputs. So you wanna make sure one and two should already be turned on, and then let's turn on three and four in additionally. That way we can send our signal to our headphones on output three and four. You don't need to turn all of these on unless you're planning on using even more outputs for sending things places. Uh, because of the way I'm recording this video, I actually need to do something slightly different. I'm actually gonna be sending my audio to a multi-output device, which is sending uh, both to my interface as well as to my uh, screen capture software. So select your output, make sure your output configuration is turned on for one and two and three and four, and you're pretty good to go. Once you do that, let's take a look over here at our master track. We're gonna have this master output, which is where the, the signal can be sent to to go to your speakers. And then we have this cue out here, which usually will be default to the same output. So your cue out and your master out are the same thing. However, if we set the cue out to be different than our, our master output, something important changes over here. This button here, which is normally a solo button, and it's grayed out and doesn't do anything, um, will actually be clickable. So this only works if your master output and your cue out are going to separate outputs. So you can see the solo button uh, is now lit up blue, which means I can click it, switching it from a solo button to a cue button. Once you switch over to cue mode, all of the solo, what were the solo buttons on our tracks now become little headphones, which indicate that they are now cue outputs. So what this means is if I have a clip playing here, just have a drum loop, we can see, we can see the signals going out to our master one and two. But if I hit this button right here, it becomes blue and now it's sending out to both my master one and two, but also my cue out three and four, which is super handy. So if your output looks blue, that means it's sending a signal to both your headphones as well as to your main output. Now here's the cool thing. If I take this volume and I start to turn this down while the cue is still turned on, let's go ahead and turn, hit this play again. If I turn this down here, we can see there's nothing, you won't be able to hear it anymore. Uh, and there's nothing being sent to the master anymore. But this is still being sent to my cue output. So I can still listen to this on my headphones. So this would be great for a situation where, again, say you wanna send a metronome to a drummer or an instrumentalist who's playing with you, they can hear the metronome even though the audience can't which is really handy. So even though the volume here is turned down, we're still sending a signal out. 
In addition to that, if I want to actually control the volume going to my headphones or going to my cue, we have this blue knob right here, which I can use to adjust and change the volume. And we can see here, I can turn it down. Again, you won't be able to hear it because the video software is not gonna be able to pick it up. So I can make it really quiet or I can make it super loud. You can see now it's clipping. Um, so if your drummer or your instrumentalist uh, needs more metronome, you can turn the metronome up and we'll turn it down for them. Um, or again, if you're DJing, you can turn the volume up or down as you're listening to the track before the audience even hears it. Um, and so you can do this on individual tracks one at a time, or you can do it multiple tracks simultaneously. So you can mix and match and be able to hear different sounds than what your audience is gonna be hearing, which is really, really handy. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, you really just need to make sure it gets set up correctly. And then once you've done that, uh, the rest is pretty straightforward, uh, but really, really handy. It's definitely something not a lot of people realize you can do and can make your life a lot easier, especially in more complicated live performance setups. So hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Hopefully that's helpful information for you. Uh, keep an eye out next week for yet another video and uh, we'll see you soon.